Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to know how Winona Ryder achieved her impressive net worth. Let's get right into it. Winona Ryder was the it girl of the 1990s, and after a hiatus from the entertainment industry, she proved that she could still hold her own. Winona Laura Horowitz was born in Winona, Minnesota on October 29, 1971. Because of her parents' close friendship with Laura, wife of writer Aldous Huxley, she was given the middle name Laura. Soul and rock singer Mitch Ryder inspired her stage name. When she was cast, the director asked how she wanted her name to appear in her debut film. With a Mitch Ryder album playing in the background and her father being a huge fan, she quickly dubbed herself Ryder. At the age of seven, Ryder's family moved to Rainbow, a commune outside of Elk, California. They shared a remote property without electricity with seven other households. Ryder began devouring works such as The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger at the encouragement of her parents, who were both writers and editors with an extensive network of notable literary acquaintances. After three years, the family relocated to Petaluma, California. She enrolled in acting classes at the American Conservatory Theatre in San Francisco. She nearly drowned when she was 12 years old, causing her to develop a severe phobia of water. In the 1986 comedy Lucas, Winona Ryder made her acting debut opposite Corey Haim and Charlie Sheen. Her second film, Square Dance, was released in 1987, and several critics, including the Los Angeles Times, praised her performance. In Tim Burton's Beetlejuice, her portrayal of the gothic adolescent Lydia Dietz earned her critical and financial acclaim. Beetlejuice was a box office success and received positive reviews. Winona was still in high school at the time, and kids' taunts about her being a witch exacerbated the bullying she endured. After that, Ryder was cast in a major role in the 1988 film Heathers. In 1990, Winona starred alongside Johnny Depp in the fantasy thriller Edward Scissorhands, directed by Tim Burton. This was her greatest box office success to date, grossing $86 million and receiving praise from critics. Later that same year, Ryder was cast alongside Cher in the comedy drama Mermaids. The following year, Ryder appeared alongside Daniel Day-Lewis in The Age of Innocence by Martin Scorsese. Her performance earned her the Golden Globe for Best Supporting Actress, as well as an Oscar nomination in the same category. 1994 was a great year for Winona, beginning with the release of Ryder's next film, Ben Stiller's Generation X thriller Reality Bites. Her leading role earned her a great deal of critical acclaim, but the film did not perform well financially. In 1994, Ryder's role as Josephine March in Little Women brought her additional recognition. Her performance earned her a Best Actress Oscar nomination. The 1995 film How to Make an American Quilt was her next leading role. However, the situation deteriorated thereafter. In 2001, Ryder was arrested for shoplifting at a Beverly Hills, California, Saks Fifth Avenue department store. She was accused of stealing $5,000 worth of expensive clothing and accessories. She was charged with three felonies, including grand theft, shoplifting and vandalism. In 2002, she was sentenced to three years of probation, 480 hours of community service, and restitution to the department store. The felonies were downgraded to misdemeanors in June 2004. Ryder stated in interviews that the incident occurred during a difficult time in her life when she was profoundly depressed, and that her actions were influenced by excessive painkiller use, which impaired her judgment. The California Medical Board has since revoked the physician's medical license for prescribing the patient's opioid dosage. Prior to her hiatus, she completed two films, Adam Sandler's Mr. Deeds and the science fiction drama Simone. Following her sabbatical, she starred in A Scanner Darkly by Richard Linklater, Sex and Death 101, Top 10 and The Last Word. In 2009, she starred in The Informers and Star Trek. During this period, she appeared in modest independent films and avoided public appearances. Ryder had a spectacular comeback in 2016 when she began starring in the Netflix horror film Stranger Things by the Duffer Brothers. She portrays Joyce Byers, a single mother whose 12-year-old daughter mysteriously disappears. In 2020, Ryder appeared in the HBO limited series The Plot Against America. Winona earned $100,000 per episode in the first two seasons of Stranger Things. During this time, there were 17 episodes, and the two seasons cost approximately $1.7 million. Starting with the third season, Winona's salary per episode increased to $350,000. It amounted to approximately $3 million for the third season. Winona has received numerous awards and accolades for her work in a variety of roles, including a Golden Globe Award for Best Supporting Actress and an Academy Award nomination in the same category for her portrayal in Martin Scorsese's The Age of Innocence in 1993. She was also nominated for the Academy Award for Best Actress for her performance as the tomboyish Joe in Little Women in 1994. In 2010, Ryder received a star on the Hollywood California Walk of Fame. In 2016, Stranger Things earned Ryder a nomination for a Golden Globe. She has also been nominated for four Screen Actors Guild Awards. Today, Winona Ryder's estimated net worth is $18 million. That's it for today. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like button.
Don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you never miss out on any future content we'll produce for you guys. We're signing off now, but we'll be sure to catch you all in the next one.